Welcome to the St. Clair Cloud Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario for OCAA Women's Basketball Action. Today, it's the Sheridan Bruins facing the St. Clair Saints. Good afternoon. I'm Aaron Sanders with JP Justin Prince. We're coming on in the home stretch of the OCAA season, JP, and the St. Clair Saints got a big challenge against them today. The Sheridan Bruins, as we begin with them, we take a look at their stats. They have a two-game losing streak, but... This is a big game for them because it may play a key role in the top four standings of the West Division. Absolutely. Andy Kiss for St. Clair College called this a must-win situation against the Bruins, one of the top four teams on paper talent-wise. However, they're coming in on a two-game losing streak, and as you see with the statistics, a team that can score pretty efficiently, about 34%, and is decent at the free throw line. So this is a team where St. Clair is going to have to play strong defense to come away with the, with the victory, they especially score, against this player. They, they score almost 69 points, and look, look, Teresa Brown, the key player for the Sheridan Bruins, 32 points in their outing against Humber a few months ago. But again, you have to expect that from a veteran of her caliber. Absolutely. It was talked about a little bit with their head coach in our discussions with Sean Douglas that this is one of the key players to keep an eye on for the Sheridan Bruins because of that of efficiency. It's going to be difficult with St. Clair, especially to hold them on defense. And there's the stats right there for St. Clair. They're coming in on a good winning streak. They beat Lampton the last time around, 11-3 record, 69 points per game. And they also have some hot shooters too, especially when it comes to their key factor, Nor Bazzi from downtown. Yeah, Nor Bazzi expects it to come off the bench for today, but when she's able to score and when she's been able to be effective from downtown, the offense is clicking. 29.2% this season from deep overall, 31 triples, and a season-high 14 rebounds against Niagara on January the 26th. Six, somebody that could be an impact on both sides of the basketball, but for St. Clair to have a chance, they need Bozzi to perform well. They cannot afford a poor shooting performance. One of the main things discussed overall, Aaron, by Andy Kiss, needing to improve on the offense for the last games. They need that because this is a big weekend for them. But they will play against the Sheridan Bruins first here from the St. Clair College Sportsplex. We'll have the opening lineup and the tip-off when we return in a moment. Hey, Herman Moore here, Detroit Lions legend and four-time Pro Bowl player. Hey, get your tickets and join me for the 15th annual Westby Awards on Tuesday, March 10th at the Kaboto Club. The 15th annual Westby Awards are brought to you in part by Unifor Local 444, Lucia Glove and Safety, Hotham Building Materials, AM800, CKLW, and We Digital Productions. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the St. Croix College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario, for today's coverage of LCAA Women's Basketball between the Sheridan Bruins and the hometown St. Clair Saints on Weed Teacher Productions. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders in the Mons on Time Express broadcast booth as we get all set to go for the second and last home game of the 2019-20 regular season. This matchup has lots of implications, and as starting lines get introduced across the arena, a lot to talk about, to say the very least, between two com very competitive teams, Aaron. Well, we're talking about one of the top five teams of the Western Division, JP. And when it comes to Sheridan, they have to keep focused with St. Clair. They're aware of their sharpshooters. They're aware of how much damage they could do in the mid-range game. But again, both of these clubs, they're very close to each other when it comes to points to the game. 68.7 for Sheridan, 69.2 for St. Clair. Looking at your starters for today's matchup for the Sheridan Bruins with their 9 6 record, it'll be Laura Jarakis making the start alongside Sydney Charvis, Ashley McDonald, 
Devin McKenzie and Teresa Brown, the starting five for Sheridan. For the St. Clair Saints, it's Kirsten Tompkins, Anya Lichney, Logan Casera, Jenna Casera, and Nicole Tam rounding up the starting five for the 11 3 Saints. That's a look at your starting lineups for today. St. Clair will be wearing their white jerseys with the green trim. Sheridan in their blue jerseys with the white trim for today's action. Aaron, your keys to victory for today's matchup. It's going to come down to defense, JP. St. Clair's done a terrific job with their defense in the last couple of games. For Sheridan, they have to limit St. Clair when it comes to shooting out to in. And another thing is you have to limit the key scores. Teresa Brown, the veteran, Norb Badzi for St. Clair. And we're underway from Windsor, Ontario. St. Clair with the opening possession. The outside, Janet Cassara gives it to Lichney. 13 on the shot clock. Topkins moves it off to Tam. Back to Janica Sarah, cuts inside. The spin, the drive, misses no good. Logan Cassara's second chance doesn't go either. Rebound picked up by the Bruins. Bruins coming into today, as talked about in the pregame, just under 69 points per game. Baseline drive, kick back outside. Brown, the long shot drops. And one of the trickiest shots the take from is from the sideline, JP, but Sheridan did a real good job with two quick passes, and they were able to send it right down outside for the three. And that was talked about a little bit by Andy Kiss, where they like to beat you off the bounce, Sheridan does. That time, Tam tries to beat them on the box out. Instead, ball goes out of bounds off of Tam. Really now, good. Now, today's JP. officials there, Mary Rondo, Glenn Greenfield, and Dave Kerndia for today's matchup. I was going to say, Nicole Tam did a really good job anticipating for that rebound, but you see early on, Sheridan goes real deep when it comes to boxing out down on the basket. Shot drops, it's good once more. And already back-to-back -back triples, this one by Jarakis. So far, the Bruins off to a strong start to Danae's matchup. Tompkins gives it off to Janica Serra. Moved along to Tam, Tam nearly loses the ball. Eight on the shot clock. Janica Sarah with the pick once again. Logan with the drive inside the paint. First points drop for St. Clair. She was able to get that shot from the elbow, but the Sheridan Bruins did a real good job getting Nicole Tam out of the paint. Ball turned over quickly, already out of bounds. St. Clair possession. Let's take a look at the replay, though, with the first point for the Saints today. Anytime you get Logan Cassero the ball and she finds an opening, she'll take advantage of that. She drove right into the elbow. Meanwhile, Janica Serra drains the triple. Five straight points for the Saints in the span of about 40 seconds. Six to five to score, approaching two minutes into the first quarter here on We Did Her Productions. Jarvis, contested shot, doesn't draw iron. Tap back into play by the Bruins for the offensive rebound. And a whistle called Janica Serra in the vicinity that time of Jarakis. That's going to be the first personal, it appears, of the day today. A quick correction on the scoreboard. It's been moved to a two on one of the early shots by St. Clair to make it six to four. Yeah, they count that as a long two. Indeed, that would be on the last shot from Janica Sarah. Meanwhile, long shot for the Bruins, no good. Picked up by Yelichny. St. Clair looking to push the tempo. Ball tapped out of bounds. As the corrections continue to come from the scoreboard side, they have officially corrected the score to 5-5. They have ruled one of the early triples as a Sheridan long two. Jenna Cassera with the basketball, meanwhile. Logan Cassera. Back to Jenna Cassera. Outside the arc, takes it in to Tompkins. Can't get it to go down low. Now you see, you have to finish strong when you're given open space down on the right side. Kirsten Tompkins got the nice pass, but couldn't finish it off. McDonald that time draws the pushing foul. As Norm Bozzi will come into the game, one of our players to watch during the pregame. We talked about the perimeter shooting 29% from deep for Bozzi. And she averages 12 points per game along with seven rebounds as well. Low scoring game for her last game against Lampton with six oh, yeah. points before rebounds, but nonetheless, St. Clair needs her long range abilities here this afternoon and the weekend as well as the rebounding we've seen as well. Pass goes out of bounds. Overtopped Ham and off to the baseline. Sheridan possession. 
and not we're not even three minutes in, JP. And we're seeing how suffocating the defense is from Sheridan. They're doing a really good job keeping all St. Clair's bigs out of the paint and into uncomfort territory. Poked away by the Saints. Here comes Logan Gassera. Alechny moves to the outside corner. Bozzi with it up at the top. Takes it away from the paint. Back to Alechny. 13 on the shot clock. Janica Serra for three off the back rim. Rebound picked up by the Bruins. Lehas on the board. Up the floor it goes for the bucket. McKenzie. Transition, very important. Most important, another important aspect of transition, JP, is to finish strong. And Sheridan, they were able to use the glass off of that. It's just elementary from there. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Janica Serra with some space. Gives it to Bozzi inside the arc. Can't get the mid-range jumper to go. Tap to the bounds. They say it goes off the Bruins. And if substitution comes into the game, it is Ellis. Ellis coming in for McDonald. Seven to five is the score as the ball's tapped back out of bounds by the Bruins. Approaching four minutes into the first quarter. And again, the defense not letting up for Sheridan on every long range pass. They always have two people right down on the side to try to intercept it. So it's just good planning from Sean Douglas. Yeah, he's mentioned to us that he worked on defensive switch as a part of this two game losing streak to improve on that. Tam can't make a drop meanwhile on the drive. Moved in, Yolichny keeps it in off of Bozzi, but picked up by Ennis. Taken up by Charvis. Poked away by Yelichny. Dives on top of the basketball. Jump ball situation. Possession arrow stays Sheridan. And a substitution coming in. Tompkins back in for Bozzi. And our substitution also coming in meanwhile. It's going to be e. Jaden Dunkley coming in. The first year player from Brampton. Also coming in for St. Clair amongst the adjustments is Kaylee Chauvin. Approaching halfway to go in the first quarter. Outside for three. No good from Jarvis. Battle for the rebound. Picked up by the Bruins. Fresh 14 for them as the pass goes towards the baseline. Stolen away. Tompkins takes it up for St. Clair. Give it off to the corner. Yolichny, double team. Given to Tompkins. Back to Logan Gassera. Drives it in. Traffic for the bucket. It has been a while since we've seen St. Clair make a field goal, and his great ball movement and their ability to respond really quick to the double team really did wonders. About three minutes was the difference between the last made field goal and that one. Ball out of bounds, St. Clair possession, substitution coming in. It is Tamiya Rowe coming in for the Bruins. But to get back on your point, JP, that says a lot about Sheridan's defense. And again, those defenses, the adjustments been working out for them. Only 14 points combined mm -hmm. in the first five or so minutes, but the edge has been given to Sheridan at the moment because of their defense and their ability to create space offensively and have all that depth. Kalut Ahmad came in on that stoppage for Janica Serra. Ahmad trying to find space as Yulichny chucks up the shot, no good. Picked up by Charvis once again. Moved up quickly to McKenzie. Wedges the ball on top of the rim and triggers a possession arrow. That would have been two points to give the lead instead. That's one for the blooper reel. Absolutely, and Sheridan has the advantage as far as speed and the transition is concerned, JP. So the Saints were able to take two points back away from the Bruins <laughs> off of that wedgie, and now they have the basketball. They bring in our substitution, Camilla or Lana, Lana coming in for the Bruins. As Ahmad gives it off to Chauvin. Long shot, no good. Tap back out for the rebound, Charvis with the basketball. That was a nice shot choice from Chauvin. Charvis, meanwhile, gives it back off. 16 on the shot clock, pass tapped out. Stays Bruins possession. They say it was tapped out off of Chauvin. And Chauvin amongst the players that are a part of this young core, a second year player from Mutabin, Ontario. Looking to gain more experience as this time goes on. Substitution though, see Chauvin come out and that brings Leanna Rose, the Lighthouse into the ball game. 
Inbounded directly that time to Dunkley. Long shot, no good. Picked up by Amon. Approaching four minutes to go in the first quarter in Windsor. Logan Casera outside to Chauvin. This time drives it in. Amon, space in the mid-range. No good. And St. Clair is doing all the good things offensively except get the ball into the net. Sheridan, on the other hand, they have to stop relying on the long ball. Yeah, so far, both teams have been missing a fair amount of shots in this ball game. Rowe with eight on the shot clock. Post up Logan Gacera, pass back outside. Three to work with the drive over two. Saints no good. Ball tapped around to Logan Gacera, rebound. And St. Clair, one of the main things they needed to improve upon in Coach Kiss's opinion against Lampton was offensive production. We're seeing the same case potentially today so far. Shot no good on the air ball. Rowe picked up on the rebound. Rowe takes it up. Kicked along to the corner. 4-3 off the front of the rim. Chauvin this time on the glass. Approaching three minutes to go in the first quarter in a 7-7 ball game. Saints and Bruins tied up in this action. Chauvin off to Lichny. The shot goes off the front of the rim. And the defense from both sides seems very strong in this game so far, Aaron. Yeah, it's, and honestly, when it comes to the shooting, JP, it's very tough. But defense has been working for both of these clubs. You just got to find a way to get the ball in the hole. And a bucket drops for the first time in a couple minutes, this time by Ennis. 9-6, Sheridan. Sankor looks to respond back with her own bucket. Logan Gassero off to Amon. Yelichny trying to find space. Amon drives into a defender. Draws the whistle. Little Mon will make her way towards the line after this play. It appeared to be a late whistle, but again, Kaluta Mod making the right decision, not referring to a shot, and instead just driving it right on Camilla Orellana. Orellana has the first team foul of the game already making her way towards the bench. Well, Mod has a chance to make some free throws. St. Clair 61.5% this season from the strike, makes the first of two. Kaluta Mon JP is one of those players that keep on improving with the green and gold. She's one of the defensive specialists like Nura Fazi, mm -hmm. but when you give the ball to in her hands, she's able to drive, she's able to make those mid-range jumpers, or if need be, go right up to the basket. One of the players who came on a part of that stoppage, Brown back in for the Bruins. Rejected by Tam, meanwhile, at the other end. They need a defensive firepower in the last few minutes, and hopefully that sparks a strong defensive run for the final two minutes and 13 seconds. And that was a good effort as well. And you see Tompkins there try and swap that one away. Rowe, meanwhile, is out of the ball game. Back in is McKenzie. Down low, whistle called. And they signal a jump ball situation. And you'll see why on the replay. And see, Kaluta Maud gave her a little bit of a space, but she was able to recover and snag that ball. That was just before the shot. Meanwhile, the Bruins missed their shot opportunity off the live inbound. Under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Nine all between the Saints and the Bruins. Amon gives it off to Tompkins. Outside. No good off the back screws. Again, on the glass that time was Brown. Brown averaging about eight rebounds a game this season. And is with it. Back to McKenzie. Through two defenders, dives back on the basketball. St. Clair steals it away. Here comes Janica Serra. Has to stop. Finds Tompkins out to Bonzi for the mid-range. Yes! What an eye from all the St. Clair Saints on that play. Just keep your head up and start swinging the passes around. You'll get good results. And it's no good on the shot. Bossy on the glass once more. St. Clair looking to be able to run. Tompkins wide open for three. Yeah, she's got it. And it all started with Nora Bazzi recognizing Tompkins down to the corner. And Sheridan didn't have enough time to respond. 5-0 run in the past 15 seconds. Bruins look to change that statistic. Can't drain it from deep. 
I honestly thought that shot was going to go in, JP. The way she set herself up and had enough space to let it fly. Tompkins, meanwhile, with more space on the outside arc. No good, this time just off the front rim. 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. But a 12 second difference, shot clock and game clock. Bruins taking their time on this possession. Dunkley loses the handle, ball goes out of bounds. That off the pass for Menace. And another substitution coming in too. Chauvin also in as, as well as McDonald, Aaron. And Sheridan in the last few minutes haven't been uh, producing much offensively. It's because St. Clair has been tightening up defensively inside. Mm -hmm. When they brought in the bigs like Nord Bazzi mm -hmm. and Nicole Tam, they were able to step up and contest every single shot Sheridan had to offer. Absolutely. Charvis, not Chauvin, pardon me on that. But Janica Sarah gives it to Bazzi. Four seconds to go in the first quarter. Janica Sarah tries to draw the whistle. Instead, Tam picks up the offensive board. And after one quarter of play, the Saints finish the frame on a 5-0 run. Boy, back after these messages, you're watching We Did Your Productions live from the St. Croix College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario. Hi, I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, We Digital. Express has all of your delivery needs covered with a fleet of 50 vehicles, including cargo and sprinter vans, along with 24 foot straight trucks. It doesn't matter if the freight is big or small. Lance On Time Express can guarantee safe and prompt delivery service throughout Canada and the United States. Licensed to broker freight throughout North America, Lance On Time Express features same day delivery service, along with a state of the art dispatching system and live GPS tracking assistance. Lance is fully insured and and Canadian bonded and has certifications with FAST, CTAC, PIP, and SmartWay. Mont's On Time Express is open 24 hours a day, 364 days a year. To get your delivery moving, contact Mont's On Time Express at www.montsontime.ca or call toll free at 877-250-8282. <laughs> Here, it's about you, your passion, your skills, stepping up to the challenge. It's here where we rise above, soar to our full potential, and where we become work ready. St. Clair College, it's time to take flight, rise above the ordinary. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to We Digital Productions' as coverage of OUA OCAA Women's Basketball. Take a look at the previous meeting between St. Clair and Sheridan. This was back on November the 23rd, and it was a thrower, a 53-50 victory for St. Clair over Sheridan in that matchup, Aaron. Absolutely. Logan Casera, 15 points, and keep in mind, that was a very, very close game as well. But now we have a second quarter. Yelechny outside, no good. Tompkins resets the shot clock to five. Outside, Lo Ings, Logan Casera for the drop shot, yes. And St. Clair's been looking for opportunities like those, JB, because in the first mm -hmm. quarter, it wasn't a shooter's battle at any means. It's been a battle of the defense. Both of these clubs have very, very strong defense, but they can't, couldn't find a way to put the ball in the hole. Jarakas, no good on the long shot as the ball goes out of bounds off the Bruins. But right now, what do you think was that main difference for St. Clair to now go on as essentially a 7-0 run that spanned from the end of the first quarter to the first moments of the second? Well, they swung the ball around, and number two, they stayed in the mid-range game. They realized the three-pointer wouldn't go for either team today, so they were able to change it up with their bigs, but they, were, but they gave the ball away on that one. Brown with the steal. Charvis passes it back outside. McDonald will back outside for Brown. Brown. Off to Charvis, back and forth. Nine on the shot clock, Brown in the mid-range, no good. Picked up the rebound by McKenzie, Brown back to work. Back outside, Jarakas off the right rim. Ball tapped out of bounds, St. Clair possession. But I want to say something, 
did you see how much the energy changed when Nicole mm -hmm. Tam and Nor Bazzi went onto the floor? Mm -hmm. That tightened up the defense and it tightened up their offense too because they now know they could give it to somebody that could battle hard down to the basket and find some more looks. Yeah, that was something that was noticeable a bit there. As Tam gets the basketball, can't handle it though as it goes out of bounds. Yeah, they wasted that possession. And a Barbershire time out called the first of the day by St. Clair as they look to discuss things. The ball control, not the best to start off the second quarter. No, not at best, and neither is the scoring when you think of everything too. But honestly, when you swing the ball around, you have to be ready for the look. And this is an important game, a must win as talked about in the pregame for St. Clair. Not just because St. Clair is third of the standings and Sheridan is fourth and you don't want to allow a window first off. But second, as the host of the provincial championship tournament, despite having a buy essentially to the quarterfinals, they still want to improve their seed for the opening round of the event and knock other teams into tougher matchups. Sheridan, one of them. Absolutely. And you have to keep in mind, too, even though you get a buy into the provincial championship, it doesn't mean things are going to be given to you. There are players out there that want to win the championship. It's not going to be the easy way. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the hard way. You can't rely on any other teams to help you out in terms of records if you are fighting for the championship spot. And Sheridan, they're in the driver's seat right now determining their own fate, considering that their final three games are on the road. It's a very tough schedule, but it can be done. And don't forget that team you've seen just above St. Clair in the standings, the Humber Hawks. They're also coming in here tomorrow. So it is an important weekend for St. Clair, to say the very least. Second chance opportunity goes, meanwhile, for Charvis. And the aggression picking up for the Bruins, and that's what they needed the most because in the last few minutes of the first quarter, they just allowed St. Clair to get on that 5-0 run. Elechny, meanwhile, gives it off to Logan Casera. Outside to Tompkins for three. She's got it. Did you see the separation that Logan Casera made on the drive in from the left? That opened up a better look for Kirsten Tompkins, and she was able to knock down the tray. Get back, get back. And right inside goes Brown for the quick dukes. Brown went through three defenders on that play. Elechny. Loses the ball in between three defenders this time. McDonald on the drive, can't get it to go, draws the whistle. First personal foul of the corner against St. Clair. We might have another look at the last St. Clair possession. Well, we'll see the tail end of the breakaway. Olichny just dribbled it way too wide into the vantage point, JP. She didn't keep it on her body, and that prompted the steal and potential extra points down the line for the Bruins. Logan Casero on the personal, her first of the day. As McDonald, the 57% free throw shooter, makes it a 19-15 deficit. Perching three minutes into the second quarter. Here on Weed to Productions, Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders. As Tam misses the jump shot for the Saints. Tompkins out to Yelichny for three off the front rim. Oh, that was a really good shot, really good shot. Kirsten Tompkins was able to, to dish it right back out. Now the Bruins have another opportunity, wide open. Jarvis off the front rim, tap back out once more, this time out of bounds, St. Clair possession. That's one of the main things though, Aaron, is the tap outs by the Bruins battling on the rebounds. Absolutely, but when you look on the other end, they have to get the memo right now that their three pointers aren't working right mm -hmm. now. You have a lot of players that are able to make up for the size, McKenzie, Brown among the others. You have to use that to your advantage and go right down to the basket. Logan Casera, meanwhile, goes to the bucket for two. Logan Casera now has eight this game. McKenzie drives by Tam, can't get it to go. Approaching four minutes into corner number two, St. Carl leads 21-15. Tam in the post, the drive, the bucket. It's about time she gets on the scoring sheet, JP. And she was able to get rewarded. She got the fake and she drove right in. And again, the Bruins not taking advantage of their own depth. Tam, that huge mid-season addition St. Clair added, averaging about 11 points per game, just under nine rebounds a game entering today. On the drive goes Brown for the bucket once more. 
Brown continues to score buckets and well on the inside. She's got seven. Yelichny, meanwhile, gives it to Janica Serra. Loses the ball. Taken up by Charbis. Logan Casera on the defense. Forces the miss as the ball's tapped out of bounds. St. Clair possession and more substitutions come into the process. Ennis for the Bruins, Bazzi and Amon for St. Clair area. And I think this is the kind of break Sharon did needed to get back into this game. If they're able to force those turnovers and finish strong with those quick twos, they'll be able to get back into the ball game. And now you see they switch to a small ball lineup now. Yeah, with Chauvin now into the game as well. Mm -hmm. Essentially a four guard lineup on the floor for St. Clair. Yolechny loses the ball. Bruins take possession. And the Bruins going back into their roots like they did in the first few minutes of the first quarter. Displaying that suffocating defense, not allowing the guards to go inside of the mid range. They're causing fits from beyond the arc. So if they're able to capitalize on this opportunity, expect them to get onto a scoring run. That's the main thing, needing to put buckets in the score. Travels do not help that case. That's the situation on that turnover, dunkling into the game in response. And it has to be frustrating too, all those opportunities and it's just one crucial sin like that. It just turns, it just turns against you. And now St. Clair with under five minutes to go can execute on another good play going inside out. Yelichny gives it off to Janica Serra. Down low, stolen away once again by Ennis. Taken up by Brown. Just past halfway to the second quarter. Charvis with the basketball. And a hard whistle. Contact between McKenzie and appeared to be, I believe that was Yolichny on the contact. And take a look, this is why there's the personal. They gave the foul to Jana Cassara, mm. and you have to admire the effort from Anu Olichny, but it looked to be a little too much effort as Tommy Rowe comes in for the Bruins. Indeed, the second personal for Jana Cassara off to the bench goes Olichny as the inbound is stolen away. Ahmad takes it up, puts it over. Charvis can't bank it in. Bossy on the second chance. Still 16 on the shot clock and a travel call to on Logan Casero. And in the last minute and a half, we have seen turnovers that are unforced from St. Clair. First, the cut from Kaluta Maud to get that backdoor pass. That was turned over because she wasn't ready. Now picking up the dribble. Again, the Bruins keep on getting all these opportunities, but the question is, can they capitalize on them? Watson into the game for the first time. Will match up against Chauvin down low in the post. On the outside, Ennis, 12 on the shot clock. Tries by Bazzi and Ahmad off the front rim. Keeps it alive. Dunkley tries to move it up, draws the whistle. She'll go to the line to shoot for two. That's a great decision. A lot of people that are watching this game is going to be wondering, why did she put it up so far to the point where she wasn't going to get the finger roll to go? This is why she read the double team and she flipped it right up because she knows it was going to be a shooting foul. Misses the first two, was perfect for the line before that as a unit 70% free throw shooting. Second one drops, 23-18 the score, five point advantage for St. Clair. Here comes the defensive pressure from the Bruins. Ball moved the other direction after the defense. And of course, an interesting weekend, to say the least. Important matchups along with grad weekend here, Aaron. Absolutely. At halftime, I'm going to be interviewing one of the members of the Saints softball teams in Jordan Taylor. So you're going to hear her side of the story. What does it take to become a St. Clair Saints and what she has learned in the last three seasons as part of the Saints softball team. Mm -hmm. So. It's a senior slash grad week here in the St. Clair College campus. St. Clair looking to get the victory today on the Roan home court. Abazi with the steal on set floor. Given to Logan Casera, pass tapped out of bounds by the Bruins. Under four minutes to play in the second quarter. And this defense is continuing to stay stifling from both sides of the floor today. 
And as we've seen from the last game, stats score similar to what we've seen after halftime. Mm -hmm. Bazzi gives it off to Tam. Whistle drawn down low. For the Bruins, just their first personal of the quarter on the push. That time, the foul goes against Dennis. And again, North Bazzi with just the great basketball IQ, sending it right down to Nicole, to Nicole Tam. Jump ball situation. Possession arrow goes Sheridan's direction. Inbound was going to Logan Casera. Mm -hmm. A grinding out type of game so far with lots of turnovers such as that. Another one goes this time to the green curtain. That time, Vallejas on the pass. And again, it's quite interesting that the Sheridan's only down by five. They're still into this game. But if they keep on committing turnovers like that, St. Clair could just turn the scoring run on in the blink of the eye. They haven't been lucky in scoring in the last few minutes, so something has to change. Yeah, for the Bruins, just two losses that have been in double-digit points this season. Out of their six total on the campaign, they try and close up the gap to a single possession here. Dunkley, pass back outside. Eight on the shot clock. The mid-range drops. Watson. And you know how long it's been since the Bruins were able to get a long-range, mid-range jumper off like that. They were able to open things up offensively down the corner. At least a few minutes as an air whistle's called. Second personal against the Bruins. This time it goes against Rowe and brings in substitutions. Tompkins comes out of the ball game. Yelechny back in will be the inbounder. Multiple substitutions for the Bruins as well. Amongst them, Jarakis back onto the floor, lined up alongside Jarvis and Brown, rounding up the five. Lejas along with Ennis. The second chance points for St. Clair drop. And most of the Bruins fell asleep on the defense on the left side, so Nicole Tam was able to explode right down to the basket and pick up the second chance, and there she is with the steal. Moved up the floor by St. Clair. Logan Casera to Tam, pass deflected out of bounds once more. Now substitution, McDonald comes into the game. Approaching two minutes to go in this first half. St. Clair leads 25-20. How about that pick from Nicole Tam? She was able to pick it right up. And that's the beauty of a good pick. You're opening up more options on the offense. Ahmad, the mid-range. Can't get it to roll in. Brown on the glass once again. Guarded by Logan Casera. Moved around by Ennis. Over top of Tam gets it to go. And now the scoring is starting to pile up for both of these teams. It's still 25-22. And the pace is also picking up Amon off of her and out of bounds. Here comes Tanae Freckleton for the first time today. If you want to talk about how tough the St. Clair defense has been, you have to talk about how much Tanae Freckleton has approved her game, especially defensively. Out of all the players, you wouldn't expect a player like Freckleton to step it up defensively. But trust me, she has been able to do a lot of things that you couldn't expect. Rebounds, steals, and blocks. Brown finds some space, draws the whistle. Tam in the area that time. First personal, fourth team foul. She had no option there but to foul. Yeah, she popped up right there, and she realized that all Brown was going to do cut right down to the baseline. She had to put a hand on her. And Brown... The lean score for this team with 14.2 points per game. Your thoughts on her game so far has been very active on the glass and very active on the drives. Well, on, well, that's what the coaches basically talked about, getting very effective on defense. You have to be very, you got to be on the nose when it comes mm -hmm. to defense, JP. But offensively, I think not a lot to be desired. A 2-2-1 two -two press coming from the Bruins. Leads to the open shot for Logan Gassera. Logan Gassera brings it to a four-point lead. Ball tapped out of bounds, and St. Clair's now responding with their own press, Aaron. When it comes to a scoring run like this, you have no choice but to limit the, mo the mobility of your opponent. Nice three from Logan Gassera, so they try to get the press in immediately. 
And it looks like they've officially ruled a personal on that initial swan. Swan, rather. McDonald is the one brought to the line. Into the bonus. They are. The Bruins are. For the next minute in 20 seconds. Both free throws drop. Two point game. This is the smallest the lead has been since the early stages of the first quarter. Bossy. Double team gives it off to Chauvin. Back to Bossy. 12 on the shot clock. Logan Casera gives it off to Yochni. Back to Bossy. Given to Logan Casera. Draws the whistle from behind with a minute left in the quarter. That time, Charvis in the vicinity. You can see Charvis thought she had the steal. Instead, it's the personal coming from behind. Mm -hmm. And Logan Cassero was right down to the elbow, ready for that pass. And she read that foul immediately. 10 on the shot clock once more. Yolichny gives it to Logan Cassero. Freckleton blocked. Picked up by Ennis. Last minute of play in the first half. McDonald gives it off to Brown. Called for the travel. We'll go back the other direction. 22, 22, 22. And Janica Sarah coming back into the game now for St. Clair, along with Tam for these crucial next few moments. This, remember, was the time where St. Clair grew the lead from a tie to a five-point advantage at the end of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Bazzi gives it off to Yelichny, to Logan Casera for three. Can't get it a goal, clanks off the rim. Battle for the rebound, picked up by Janica Serra. And draws the personal. Charm is on the reach. Bruins wanted a jump ball in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Instead, a chop on the wrist. Well, unfortunately, that's what happens in broken plays. Just too much contact will get you as the Barber Chair's timeout is coming up for the St. Clair Saints. But how about that block from Markella Ennis? That's just perfect no. timing. Ennis been, has been very active off the bench today for the Bruins. Again, triggering the second Bomber's shirt timeout of this game today. At this point, St. Clair with a decent amount to discuss with just a two-point advantage. This lead, mind you, is as large as five or six. But let's talk about the St. Clair at Saints Athletes of the Week. For women's basketball, it was Nicole Tam. For men's basketball, it was Dalen Davis. Your thoughts, Eric? Well, you know what? I'm not surprised Nicole Tam is the player of the week for the St. Clair Saints because ever since she came back, the second half of the season. She's been stepping it up to something St. Clair needed. She, they needed somebody else with depth and the veteran ability, and that came in Tam. For Dalen Davis, I was surprised at his outing in the last few games. He was able to make a difference against Canador a week and ago, so hats off to Nicole and Dalen. Yeah, for Dalen Davis specifically, 21 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, three steals against Canador. One of his best performances in 2019-20. But in this women's basketball matchup, 28-26 is the score. A close one so far. 27.5 seconds to go in the quarter. St. Clair with the basketball. 13 second difference, shot clock and game clock. Tam off to Bazzi. Stolen away by Charvis. Charvis drives in for the time. Shot clock is off for the last potential shot of the half. Janica Serra sets it up at the top. Five seconds to go in the first half. Tam the pick. Tam has it stripped away. And at halftime, it's all tied up at 28 apiece. An absolute thrower to start off grand weekend. And it's been all defense as well. Halftime coverage coming up after these messages. You're watching Weeds to Productions live at the St. Clair College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. 
Why? I want this to be perfect. I want to be inspired. I want to be challenged. No matter the reason, our passion to learn brought us here. Hey, Herman Moore here, Detroit Lions legend and four-time Pro Bowl player. Hey, get your tickets and join me for the 15th Annual Westby Awards on Tuesday, March 10th at the Kaboto Club. The 15th Annual Westby Awards are brought to you in part by Unifor Local 444, Lucier Glove and Safety, Hotham Building Materials, AM800, CKLW, and We Digital Productions. At halftime, I'm Aaron Sanders here at the Mont on Time Express broadcast booth. Sheridan Bruins of the St. Clair Saints here at halftime. Joining me is the Sheridan Bruins head coach, Sean Douglas. And, Sean, this is exactly what you talked about during the pregame. Uh, defense was the key, but what else did you take away from the first 20 minutes? Uh, we did a good job of uh, switching in and out of defenses and uh, forcing them into tough shots. Uh, this is their home court. They're going to be comfortable shooting from the outside, so we got to do a good job of running them off the line, and we did that in the first half. The only problem is second chance opportunities. I mean, once we do run them off the line and t force them into a tough shot and get them to miss, we got to rebound and go the other way. Offensively, the key player is Teresa Brown with nine points. No surprise for you, of course, but there has been some times where you guys would have some good looks offensively, but they wouldn't go in. What has to happen here in the next 20 minutes? Well, we usually have a goal of trying to get the other team into bonus quite early in the quarter. So when they step up and press and we actually beat that press, we have to look to attack. We need to look to make easy buckets or get to the foul line. And, you know, it's it's on the onus is on them. The coaching staff can't do it for them. You know, we do enough yelling on the sidelines, but they got to look within and motivate themselves to play at a high level and high pace. I know this, these next game, three games are important for you because you guys have to play on the road. What are the other onuses when it comes to playing these last three games on the road? Just staying locked in, staying together, buying into what we're trying to do as a team. I mean, it's February now. It's the end of the season. If you haven't bought in by now, then I don't know what we're going to do coming into playoffs and Ontario championships and things of this nature. So we just got to buy in, stay together, and stay locked into whatever give game plan we've got going out. And it's going to be different from team to team because, you know, there's pers different personnel on different team and different teams do different things. So, you know, we're just going to have to look to identify that and see what works. All right, Coach, all the best to you. In the Thanks a lot. Half. Thank you for the time. Sean Douglas, the head coach of the Sheridan Bruins. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of our halftime coverage in a moment. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The Academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. Welcome back. Now joining me, the assistant coach of the St. Clair Saints, Andrea Kiss. And Andrea, this was a defensive battle to begin with. Tied up at 28. What did you think of the first half? Um, I definitely, like you said, defensive battle for sure. Um, a lot of rebounding going on. I mean, both teams aren't really hitting a lot of shots, so that's an important part of the game right now. Absolutely. This is a big weekend for you guys, Sheridan today and Humber tomorrow. What's been the key plans and what's been said in the locker room when it comes to taking on a tough weekend like this? Definitely one game at a time. We're not focused on Humber at all right now. We have to win this game, and then tonight we'll start preparing for Humber. Mm -hmm. 
No surprise that Logan Casera is on the scoreboard, 11 points leading at halftime. I mean, who else has stepped up for you guys that you thought, hey, here in the second half, we may see more minutes from him on the court? Um, I mean, our starters are doing a good job right now. I mean, Logan is kind of our leading offensive player. No one's standing out too much on offense. I thought Nicole Tam did a good job, good job cleaning up on some of the missed shots um, on the O-glass, so we have to keep that going into the second half. What else do you have to take in consideration to wrap this game up? Uh, keep the defense going, and we got to start hitting on offense for sure. Um, 15 and 11 are key players for them, so we have to key in on them. Uh, I think 15 had a, a couple good makes throughout the first half, so we got to keep shutting her down on offense. Absolutely. Andrea, thank you for your time, and good luck in the second half. Thank you. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have Jordan Taylor, one of the graduating seniors from the softball team at St. Clair, after this. Hi, I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, we digital. Mont's On Time Express has all of your delivery needs covered with a fleet of 50 vehicles, including cargo and sprinter vans, along with 24-foot straight trucks. It doesn't matter if the freight is big or small. Mont's On Time Express can guarantee safe and prompt delivery service throughout Canada and the United States. Licensed to broker freight throughout North America, Mont's On Time Express features same-day delivery service, along with a state-of-the-art dispatching system and live GPS tracking assistance. Mont's is fully insured and Canadian bonded and has certification with FAST, CTAC, PIP, and SmartWay. Mont's On Time Express is open 24 hours a day, 364 days a year. To get your delivery moving, contact Mont's On Time Express at www.montsontime.ca or call toll-free at 877-250-8282. Here are the Sportsplex, and it's grad week here at the St. Clair College campus, and I'm pleased to have one of the seniors here for this year from the Saints softball team, Jordan Taylor, who just wrapped up a three-year career with the softball team. First off, Jordan, thank you for being with us, and congratulations on an outstanding career. Um, just talk about how it feels to be honored here at halftime after all that you have done in the last few years? It's kind of exhilarating to see because I've seen athletes over the past few years from my first year to my second and this year going to the other schools and we see them at their home games, they're getting honored and they're finally getting flowers and it's like the first time for me, so I'm really excited about it. Absolutely, how much did they inspire you and your playing career? They inspired me a lot, actually. There was a few older girls from Durham where it was at the end of the season, even if they did win, they would still talk to you and still be like, hey, you know what? You did really good. I can't wait to see how you do next year. I hope you come back. I hope I still want to play against you. Uh, just talk about what you're going to take away from your three years as a St. Clair Saints. What will you remember being a part of the Green and Gold? I will remember lots of things, especially my coaches, like Doug and Alex. They taught me very well, and Alex has taught me how to maintain calm a lot, and Doug has taught me to go crazy and, like, live a little. But it's definitely helped my game, and it's definitely helped my schooling to remain calm and plan out. Listen to the stats, ladies and gentlemen. A 380 average, three-time OCAA provincial medalist, and two silver and bronze medals. That is not a bad career if I say so myself. So Jordan, congratulations and thank you for your time here. Thank you. All right, we're gonna take one more quick break and I'll have Royal Church join me to break down the stats and facts of the first half in just a moment. <laughs> here it's about you, your passion, your skills, stepping up to the challenge. It's here where we rise above soar to our full potential and where we become work ready. St. Clair College, it's time to take flight. Rise above the ordinary. Okay, Royal Church now joins me as we break down the stats and facts of the first half. Royal, a 28-28 game in the first 20 minutes. Um, obviously scoring wasn't a factor, but what stood out in your mind in the first half of play between these two clubs? Well, first of all, Aaron, I have to say that, uh, you know, the first time they played Sheridan, it was 53-50 for St. Clair. So this isn't uh, something different going on here. This is the same stuff. 
And the reason the scores are low and it's kind of a defensive sort of game is because of uh, Sheridan. Sheridan changed coaching staffs a couple of years ago and the guy who's doing it now is doing a great job. They're disciplined, they take their time, they're patient, they don't miss easy shots. And you saw how they shot free throws, Aaron. Mm -hmm. I don't think they missed maybe one. And so if you give, if you give uh, Sheridan an opportunity and don't play your best basketball, they can beat you and they're showing it here today. Yeah, Sean Douglas did a heck of a job compiling this Bruins team together in the last few years. But you have to go back to the green and gold. There were so many times where they had open opportunities, but they forced some turnovers too. But going on the defensive side, Andy Kiss did a good job adjusting. They brought back the bigs like Nicole Tam. You see Logan Cassera doing easy work with the Bruins by cutting right inside. What else do they have to do to pull away with this victory? Well, I, I don't think you open up the game and get careless defensively and turn the ball over and start running up and down the floor uh, without a purpose. I think you keep playing a defensive game, a strong, tight, tough defensive game, um, and just stay with Sheridan, keep the score close, and uh, wait for a couple of breaks late in the game, Aaron. Absolutely. St. Clair had a couple of scoring runs near the end of the couple of quarters, but that's one thing, the defense. You keep it up, you'll limit the scoring for both of these clubs. But for St. Clair, they have to take care of business on both ends of the court and limit those turnovers. Yeah, and I think St. Clair has the uh, offensive ability to, s to really score in bunches and they could score a lot of points at once. Game stats after the first 20 minutes, the field goal percentage very close, 33-31 in favor of Sheridan. The one thing that stood out to me in the first 20 minutes was both of these clubs just trigger happy from three point land and it's like the old saying, you live by the three, you die by the three exactly. as well. Exactly, exactly. Free throws, uh, St. Clair only had two free throws the entire half. That seems kind of odd to me, but uh, it's it happened. Uh, you can see Sheridan, a high free throw percentage of 88%. They're very good from the line. That's because of their discipline and their focus. But look Turnovers at this. are even. Absolutely. Turnovers are even. So, and, and you know what? 13 turnovers. When I coached, I used to say 13 turnovers for the game. Mm -hmm. Not for a half, for a game. So that's a lot of turnovers for both teams. The discipline has to step up in the next two quarters. That's the story for you at halftime. The score, the Bruins 28, the Saints 28. JP, Justin Prince will rejoin me to call the second half in a moment. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. and gentlemen to the start of the third quarter from the St. Clair College Sportsplex in Winter, Ontario. It's LCAA Women's Basketball Action. The Sheridan Bruins tied up with the St. Clair Saints 28 all. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders in the Mons on Time Express broadcast booth. Aaron, we heard Royals thoughts and as we were just discussing just prior to coming back for the start of this third quarter, well, it's just one defensive play we've seen it in a half. Well, you have to expect that from the most disciplined team here in the OCAA West Division. The, again, he talked about how a what a tremendous job Sean Douglas did in the last few years as a part of the bench boss. But for St. Clair, you have to find some way to break that defense, get on a scoring run or something, or pick, it, or pick up the intensity. As you see, the Bruins, they stole the ball to start the third quarter. Now you have to see if they will start going inside, and they do. 
Brown no good on the inside shot taken up by Yelichny. Yelichny starting alongside Tam, Logan Casero, Tompkins, Shannon Casero, the five. Tam keeps the basketball, gives it to Tompkins. Moved along to Yelichny. Eight on the shot clock. Tam in the post, can't get it a go. Rebound that time picked up by McKenzie. McKenzie dives on top of the basketball. Tompkins chucks it up, no good. Picked back up by McKenzie, this time holds on to it. An interesting shot selection that time. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're near the basket, you have to find some way to get it right in, and Tompkins on that broken play was a testament. Tough break for Sheridan as they missed that shot. Dracus that time on the jumper, just past a minute into the start of the second half. 28 all on week to productions between the St. Quirk Saints and the Sheridan Bruins. With the basketball of the Saints, Yelichny. Outside to Tompkins, four on the shot clock. Chucks it up, drops it. Tompkins with the long two. And already approaching double digit points. Eight points for Tompkins as she was able to find an opening down at the top of the key. But you have to take this in consideration, JP. Both of these clubs had 28 points in the halftime. Mm -hmm. You know how many turnovers they committed totally? 26. Yeah. 13 turnovers and a half, it's unacceptable. A lot of turnovers already had won this quarter alone. Bruins take it up after the missed jump shot. Brown swings it around. Outside for the long chain, no good. Tompkins on the rebound once again. And out of all of the 14 three-point attempts from the Bruins, I thought that was their best look from beyond the arc so far. Janet Casera for three, meanwhile, can't get it to go. Logan Casera can't handle the rebound. That time, Sharvis comes up with it instead. Bruins push the tempo. Can't get the banker to go. McDonald on the miss. Approaching a quarter of the way through Q3. Yelichny draws the contact and the foul. And St. Clair now leads by four with a chance to extend it to five on that. And you know what? St. Clair relied on Yelichny, had enough, just had enough space for her to go right to the basket. The Bruins thought that she was going to pop up for a mid-range jumper, but you know what? When it comes to the fast break, JP, you want to get close to the basket, and that's what Yelichny did. Dracas with her second personal first team foul of the quarter after that and one situation. Dracas will back things up. Swung back around the outside. Jarvis drives it in. McDonald, the contested jumper, misses. Jarvis resets the shot clock to 14 on the board. Brown over top. Logan Casera can't get it to go. Picks up a roll, miss, drops it. And it's a crying shame these broken plays are suffering, are making St. Clair suffer. And with that broken play in the suffer, Brown has 11 points on the night. Janica Sarah drives it in through traffic, can't get it to go. And Brown continues to be on double, double watch, had five rebounds in the first half. Jarvis over top, Tam draws contact. Two free throws coming up. That'll be the first person against St. Clair in the quarter. And the Bruins just picking up the speed. How about the fake from Charvis from the right going into the left? But Tam just, again, what she's been doing in the last couple of quarters has been drawing those fouls and just yeah. waving her arms around instead of going up straight. I understand she's trying to commit to the job of blocking right down the paint when she's the only one. But you have to be careful because this is a well-disciplined team offensively and defensively. That was Tam's second personal foul of this ball game. Ball but went off the Bruins. But you've seen in the first 20 minutes, JP, St. Clair keeps on biting yeah. on the hesitation and the drive. And in turn, that's how you draw contact in a lot of cases. Logan Casera off to Bozzi for the three. Grazes the rim. And the offense back to being ice cold, approaching four minutes into the first, into the third, rather. Brown over top, Bozzi misses. Tam on the rebound, Yelichny takes it back up. Janica Sarah off to Tam. 
Bozzi moves to the far corner. Janica Serra gets the bounce. Count it. And the foul. What a bounce on that shot, Aaron. Well, she gets the lucky bounce. Take a look at her. The only person that was stopping her was Ashley McDonald. She rolled off a Tam's pick, and she just finished strong. That's the beauty of a pick and roll. Being yep. rewarded with a tough shot like that, and then some. She's off yep. to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Moving to the bench is McKenzie on that play. That will bring Ennis back in. Janica Sarah with 11 first half points, completes the end one. Check that Logan Gazera on that point total. Janica Sarah with three in the first half, now has six. Charvis, meanwhile, over Logan Gazera, can't get it to go. Battle for the rebound, draws the jump ball once more. That's been a constant theme. A lot of hustle rebounds and jump balls tonight. Mm -hmm. St. Clair has been forcing them more on the defense as opposed to the other side. So they're doing a good job with it, but you have to keep in mind it, take, they, it forces them to turnovers. And bounded by the Bruins, avoiding the five-second violation. Ennis, nine on the shot clock. Outside Brown. Back outside Ennis, just inside the arc, off the back rim. And Alichny did a good job just keeping her hands down after she went up in the air, because that could have been a foul. Ball goes out of bounds, turned back over once again off of Janica Serra. And then again, the turnovers keep on looming up for both of these teams. Remember, both of these clubs had 13 turnovers mm -hmm. at the end of the first half. Blejas into the ball game here, but it's a lot of the same issues St. Clair has. The bright side is, it's one of the largest leads of the game. Ball tapped out of bounds, stays Bruins' possessions. But the largest lead of this game by St. Clair has been eight points. They lead by six right now, that's the bright spot. And it isn't based on a scoring run, JP. It's just they've been able to capitalize on broken plays. And it, funny enough, it isn't based on the transitions. It's just great execution, travel. And another turnover this time by Brown. And this just continues to be a turnstile for possessions today. When it comes to these possessions, JP, you, you think this is an evenly matched game. Take the turnovers, cancel each other out. It's more defense than offense, like yeah. we said, since the tip-off. Yolichny, meanwhile, drops it. Well, that ties their biggest lead of the quarter, or of the game, rather. And here comes the St. Clair pressure. Press broken by the Bruins. Give it off to Ennis for the mid-range in response off the front of the rim. Rebound tapped to Amon. St. Clair pushes the tempo. Galichny, kick back to Logan Gazera for three. Gets it to go. She's got 14 this game. Barber's chair timeout called the first by the Bruins of the night. And St. Clair now leads by double-digit points for the first time today on a big-time shot by Logan Gazzara. Talk about the first three minutes of the quarter going into St. Clair's favor. Again, the execution is tightening up on the offense for St. Clair. And once you get either Janet Gazzara or Andrew Olichny going, there's no stopping them. So Andy Kiss has to be pleased at this point, but there's still a whole lot of ball game to go here. Indeed, as mentioned, Sheridan calling their first Barber's Chair timeout of the game. At this point, what do you think they're discussing as St. Clair has pulled away with all the, t despite all the turnovers from both sides? Well, I have a feeling they're going to have to think of better ways to pull off the, the defensive plays, JP. You're seeing St. Clair's getting those shots off of good pick and rolls and off the good ball movement from even off the ball too. St. Clair is just executing on the great cuts, on the great picks, so they have to find some way to limit them and force them right back outside of the three-point land. It's been an interesting game to say the very least with defense being a key factor. St. Clair looking to hold on to this run with Bozzi, Janica Serra, Galichny, Kaludamon, Logan Casero, the five. 
already providing more press defense off the inbound. Mm -hmm. And another thing Sheridan has to take in mind is they have to be ready to box out because St. Clair's been capitalizing on broken plays to the point where it gets them the scoring run. Stolen away by St. Clair. Jump shot by Yelichny misses. And this gets up on the top of the floor as the ball's tapped out of bounds. And a good effort from the Bruins. I think this is an effort to tire out St. Clair because you realize, again, this is a small ball lineup. They don't have a lot to offer when it comes to boxing out with a lot of depth for the Sheridan Bruins. So if you tire them out to the point where they'll lose track defensively, they'll be able to get in the scoring run. McDonald lined up alongside McKenzie. Also lined up, Filet has Watson Rounding out the five is Charvis. Stolen away by St. Clair. Logan Casera back to the stripe once more. Third personal at the corner by the Bruins. And you can see the frustrating, the frustration lying for the Bruins. Another turnover that was very costly. And when you have somebody right near the basket like Logan Casera, it's a big task to try to stop her without fouling. Logan Casero makes the first of two, starting at the power forward spot for tonight's matchup. It's been a very impressive game and season overall for Logan. Absolutely. You look at her stats, 17 points per game, seven rebounds, 76% from the free throw line. And remember, she had a quiet game scoring-wise against Lampton a week ago. Here comes Logan Casero called for the personal. That time, McDonald on the layup attempt. And the Bruins had broken to the press again, similar to what they did before. This time, Logan caught up. Yeah, it, she, got, she got her head before she got the ball. If mm -hmm. it wasn't for that, it would have been a clean block. So a good decision from the officiating crews here tonight. And again, that brings McDonald to the stripe. Was four for four in the first half from the free throw line. Makes the first of two. Donald, a third year player from Mississauga coming off a game with five points and rebounds, making both this time. She's got six this game, Aaron. Mm -hmm. It's been a, well, seen a lot of touches in tonight's matchup. St. Clair gets it across the timeline. Amon swatted on the pass to Bozzi. Bozzi still gets it. Double team tries to pass it off the Bruins and does draw the kick. Except it goes Bruins possession regardless. You know, the Bruins did a good job staying right down in the corner, forcing Badzi to try to throw it off their foot. It's just the placing and the positioning. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Sprinting up the floor, Jarvis. Back outside for three. Good. And she was parking right there the whole possession. And McDonald's the Bruins are able to capitalize from downtown. Donald's long shot counted as a two as a pushing foul goes against the Bruins, this time against Brown. 23, 23, 23. That's the team's fourth foul. Next one puts St. Croix in the bonus with under four minutes to go in the third. Tam, back to Tompkins. Back to Bozzi. Back and forth they go, Tam. This time to Jenica Sarah for three. She drains it. And you know what? They were able to break the 2 3 press with that quick pass to Nicole Tam. She had the eyes right at the top of the key and just found an open look. More buckets for St. Clair. The Bruins trying to change their offensive looks right now with the pressure they've been seeing defensively. Back outside for Brown. Seven on the shot clock. Jarvis cuts into the paint. The try. Can't get the lucky bounce. A whistle called after the play, and that may put St. Clair in the bonus. And yes, indeed, two free throws coming up. Take a look at this, though, from Jana. And again, Nicole Tam, that quick pass to Nicole Tam broke that 2 3 press for St. Clair, and it ended up on another Casera triple. St. Clair now in the bonus with the personal foul. 15 foul, two personals on the night so far for Jarakas. One personal foul for McKenzie, two personal fouls now for Charbis in that situation. With under three minutes of playing quarter three, 46, 34 to score. No good as Tam on the second free throw. Topkins keeps it alive, however. Yelichny avoids the jump ball, still dribbles it out of bounds. And 
Sheridan's sake. Mm -hmm. Sorry, JP. I find it interesting that Sheridan su uh, suffocates St. Clair down to the baseline, but they have no answers when it comes to boxing out and getting those rebounds. And it looks like St. Clair in response on their end of defense has continuously been trying to cause chaos that time, drawing, drawing the personal fouls, St. Clair against themselves. And again, looking at this, you have Janica Sarah going toe to toe with Darren McKenzie. She just did the right idea of just cutting right down to the baseline and just diving right into Casera. Out of the game she goes, that was her third personal. Nice. And McKenzie draws the third personal against Tam. So a couple Saints now in foul trouble, just like that. And as you were saying there, McKenzie, doing something you'd like to draw that foul against Tam because now she has to go to the bench. Mm -hmm. And Debbie McKenzie, that's just a good outlet for an inbounds pass, don't you think? Had all mm -hmm. the space onto her and she knew Tam was going to be basically in the paint. So she took advantage of it. She did what she had to do. Second free throw coming up. Gets that one to drop. Still an 11 point ball game. Bossy swings it to Kelly Chauvin. Double team Good. once again. That's perfect. Given to the baseline. Wide open, Yelichny from deep, yes. Honestly, you have to feel for Sheridan because they did the right thing, double teaming Kaylee Chauvin, but it just opened up a lot of space on their weak side. Two points back in response. Back and forth on the score sheet, staying around 11 points now. The gap with about two minutes to play in quarter three. Logan Casero loses the ball, taken up by Brown. Bazzi tries to defend it. Brown can't train it. McKenzie on the second chance rebound. 14 still on the shot clock. Over top, Bazzi, the jumper, good from Brown. Yeah, this is a perfect time for Brown to step up. She has 15 of the afternoon. You keep her open with those corner threes. St. Clair may find themselves in a very, very score, deep scoring run, which they don't want to have. Tompkins gets the defensive switch. Can't get it to go in traffic. Jump ball situation. And a smart one in that case. The Casera, Logan Casera in the vicinity. And Teresa Brown doing a good job zeroing in on the ball. Even though the possession arrow is going the other way, she's been stepping up for the Bruins this third quarter. 15 points so far. Logan Casera, meanwhile, gives it to Tompkins. Good pass, good assist. And it's just a heads up play from Logan to serve it up to Tompkins. Taken back up by McKenzie. Drives right by everybody for the bucket. Mm -hmm. And the Bruins are starting to just sprint by the St. Clair press. Yelichny gives it off to Chauvin. Tip of the foot on the green line. No good. Whistle called on the rebound. And both teams now with a bonus with 52.6 seconds. And our substitution will come in. Ennis back into the game. After he, McKenzie's drawn personal. And you know it was interesting to see Kaylee Chauvin pop up for that three. But again, how about the good eyes from Logan Casera to find mm -hmm. Kirsten Tompkins cutting right into the basket? That's just a basic night, basic high low pass. But to go back on their last possession, Kaylee Chauvin mm -hmm. shooting that three, I found that quite interesting. But just keep in mind, every time she would go either down the side, she would get double teamed or whatnot. I thought it was a good decision for her to go outside. But the problem was shooting that, it's something you wouldn't expect from her. Mm -hmm. By the way, Logan Gassera now with four, with three personals as well on the ball game. McKenzie comes out for Ennis. So that brings Amon in a line double alongside Bazi, Chauvin, Yolichny, along with Tompkins, the five. And another personal foul, this time Charvis on the defense. And foul trouble now for both sides as Charvis coming up to her third personal of this ball game. You can tell by the look of Coach Douglas, he is not happy with how this quarter has been turning out. Mm -hmm. Charvis has been very quiet 
scoring wise with only four points from some way the average is 11 points she hasn't found her groove yet and now with her being in foul trouble that might be a little bit difficult to get into a scoring run at this point both free throws are good meanwhile from Yelichny 52 43 the score Brown Gives it back off to Ennis. Ennis has been active all day for the mid-range. This time draws contact. Two more bunny ears pop up for Ennis. That time show fan in the vicinity of the whistle. What Ennis did a good job trying to get Kaylee Chauvin off on the step, that crossover dribble. You knew that Chauvin wasn't ready to shift her body to the other side on the left side. So the way that Ennis was able to execute on that play, I think that's just high IQ. When you realize that your defender's feet isn't ready to shift, that's when you apply that crossover. Second free throw up and good to bring to an eight point ball game as St. Clair looks to try and move, give a crossover back to the scoreboard to bring it back up to double digits. Bozzi, mid-range, off the front of the rim. Rebound picked up by the Bruins, shot clock is off. Ennis kicks it up to Brown, pushing the tempo of the Bruins, going for the quick shot, they can't get it a bank in. Five seconds to go in the third quarter. Dilichny bullets it over to Amon to beat yes. the buzzer. She drops it. Kalun Amon gives St. Clair a 10 point lead after three quarters of play. We'll be back after these messages. You're watching We Digital Productions from Windsor, Ontario. Hey, Herman Moore here, Detroit Lions legend and four-time Pro Bowl player. Hey, get your tickets and join me for the 15th annual Westby Awards on Tuesday, March 10th at the Kaboto Club. The 15th annual Westby Awards are brought to you in part by Unifor Local 444, Lucier Glove and Safety, Hotham Building Materials, AM800, CKLW, and We Digital Productions. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. Welcome back to Windsor, Ontario, where the St. Clair Saints lead 54-44 in OCAA women's basketball action on We Did Productions. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders of the Monson Time Express broadcast booth. And St. Clair made a lot of coaching adjustments in that third quarter. We're discussing this with Royal Church before coming back on. Part of that, five guards. That worked, it seemed. And you know what? I found it interesting that Andy Kiss went with a small ball lineup because you heard me say the third quarter, that could be a disadvantage to them when it comes to boxing out and everything because of Sheridan's death. But they were able to apply the full court pressure. And with that small ball lineup, that's going to force a lot of turnovers. And that it did in the third quarter. Right now, the Bruins looking to bring back to a single digit deficit block on the shot by Ennis. Tam on the defense. Logan Gassera takes it up. She's lined up alongside Tam. Jam Gassera, Yelichny, Topkins the five. Tam to Yelichny, outside the deep three off the front of the rim. Rebound bounces its way into the paint for another jump ball. And by Rebirth Cal, we're on about five or six total on the game today in jump ball. St. Clair this time gets possession arrow in a fresh 14. Outside Tompkins, give it off to Yelichny, this time has the screen. Back to Tompkins, pulls up the contested three, misses the rim. Logan Gassera has three seconds to chuck it up. One second in traffic, nearly wedgie the ball. 
Brown on the rebound, approaching one minute into the fourth quarter on Weeds of Directions. For those just tuning in, it was tied up at the end of the first half. Now the Bruins trail by eight after the Brown jump shot. And again, Brown just putting the Bruins on her back. She has 17 of the afternoon. Too many steps called on St. Clair. Logan Casera that time on the travel. But here's a look once again to the mid-range J over Tompkins. Well, she had the mismatch over Tompkins anyhow, so she was able to get that shot off easily. Moved around the outside, Ennis. Lined up alongside for Lohans, along with the rest oh. of the Bruins squad. A nice shot by Ennis. How many times have we seen an off-balance shot like that down the paint in the last few months, JC? Absolutely. McDonald lined up alongside Brown, the five, rounded out by Jarakas. Logan Gassera, given a Janet Gassera. Dolichny, outside, can't draw iron. Second chance rejected from behind by Brown. Third chance by Tam drops. And for a second there, I thought Kirsten Tompkins' second chance shot was going to get blocked, but she was able to find an opening and found Tam for the easy two. Coach Douglas already getting ready to bring in some starters. Ennis drops the layup down the baseline. Yeah, Sydney Charvis and Brian Mc Devin McKenzie are set to check back in for Sean Douglas Bruins. They need some reinforcements fast. Tompkins to Janica Serra. Back to Tam in the high post. Double team. Avoids the swan. Janica Serra chucks it back to Tam. Five on the shot clock. Pass to Logan Gassera. Outside. Gets oh it to my. go again. And Whoa. it looked like Nicole Tam was swamped down to the baseline. But again, she put, she put her head up and found an open Gassera for the three. And that was in part avoiding a double team and a reach in for the steal attempt. Meanwhile, Durakis gives it away to Brown. Six on the shot clock for Brown, no good. Picked up by the tough guards. Forward in, Tompkins. Janica Sarah on the transition, misses. Jarakis with the rebound and a technical called on the floor. We'll see who it is on. And that's gonna bring two free throws either way coming up on the technical. An interesting call that was just after the rebound battle. It looks like Janica Sarah is the one who got the technical foul. This is not the time for those types of plays. Take a look here. It's been a very aggressive game. I had a feeling she wanted a foul there. She pleaded her case. She had a lot of contact on her right hip. And you can see right there that that action right there got her the technical foul. They're going to choose Teresa Brown to go to the stripe, shooting about 84% this season. For Brown, she misses the first tactical. Coming into the second half, JP, yeah. she was perfect from the line. Yeah. Had, has 17 points overall in the game, though. Mm -hmm. And on that, after that tactical, Bruins get the basketball. Down 58-50 to the St. Clair Saints, approaching three minutes into the four. And anytime you see a technical foul occur on the floor, that brings up a lot of confidence for the other team. This is the break Sheridan needs. The question is, can they capitalize on it and stay away from shooting from three-point land? Majority of the starters back in for Sheridan. Drive through two defenders. That should have been a foul. No call on the play. St. Clair with the possession. Bozzi to Tompkins, wide open from deep. Can't get it to go once more. And again, McKenzie on the glass. Pass through the pressure. Ennis cuts in, no good. Second chance in the midst of traffic. Brown draws the whistle as multiple Saints help her back up. This is the time of game where things get aggressive. Now with Kalud Ahmad back into the game, you're seeing more of that small ball line up applied here. Tompkins' is second personal, Ahmad, as you mentioned, in for Logan Casera. Check that, four personals for Logan Casera. Ennis, hook, in. And Ennis enters the double digit club with that 11 points on the night. And again, I think with that technical foul, it got Sheridan right back into this ball game. Turnover. Ennis, 
Might have stepped on the line. Hold on, whistle's blown. And it will be given to the Bruins. They say it went off St. Clair in the midst of the Swats back and forth. There was a foot of potentially on the line. Yeah, and the turnovers keep on piling up for both of these clubs. Uh, St. Clair finding their lead down single digits. Stolen away by Tam and Tompkins. Tompkins needs to get it across the timeline. Boards it to Ulichny. Given to Bossy. Foot on the green line. No good. Too long on the shot once more. Tam draws the jump ball. Possession arrow stays Sheridan. And we're starting to see a tempo similar to the first half, essentially. Lots of defense. Lots of missed shots. Lots of potential turnovers and mistakes. Mm -hmm. Bruins getting right back into their game plan because defense was the onus. Ennis. Ennis can't get the hook to go. McKenzie draws the contact. She'll go to the line again to shoot for two. McKenzie so far with seven points in the night. How about the composure from Sheridan since the second half began? What was a tie game is now a six point deficit for them. Honestly, it feels like it should be shorter than that. And here's a quick recap on some of the OCAA scores. Big score there, Fanshawe Falcons coming up 93-62 over the Conestone Condors. Conestone Condors, the last game St. Clair has on the season on the road. Bruins back for the basketball, nearly losing it back on the timeline. Approaching halfway to go through the fourth quarter. Brown drives it by Tam for the bucket. I find it, I find it a little bit disappointing to see Nicole Tam giving that up. It's either she was about to take a few steps back or she just let that go. She does have three personal fouls as Yelichny gives it off to Amon. Back to Tam, avoids the pump, still gets knocked down. Brown was the player who jumped on the fake. And now our out of town score coming in, the Humber Hawks, tomorrow's opponents for the St. Clair Saints, coming up with a 67-62 victory against the Lambton Lions. That was a game that St. Clair was keeping an eye on prior to the start of this one. Absolutely, and it ended up in a squeaker. Keep in mind, Sheridan's going to Lampton tomorrow afternoon, and in return, they get the Humber Hawks. But again, this is a tough weekend for the St. Clair Saints. If they're able to pull off even a victory here this weekend, that has to say a lot going into the Provincials in a couple of weeks from now. Jarvis now with her four personal, though, and the team second of the quarter. So Charvis now on foul situation watch. Ahmad to Yelichny. Tam stolen away again. Sprinted up by the Bruins, trailing by just three. Outside, Charvis guarded by Janica Sarah. Brown moves it back, 11 on the shot clock. Spin move with the left hand, can't get it to go off the right side of the rim. Move back up by the Saints. Quickly pushing the tempo. Janica Sarah, baseline J, yes. A five point lead all of a sudden. Janica Sarah now in double digit points. She's got 11. Brown given back off. The drive inside off the front of the rim. McDonald on the miss. Approaching four minutes to go. St. Clair leads 60 to 55. Ahmad cuts in, no good once more. Remember a key matchup for both of these teams. St. Clair looking to try and improve their position for the opening rounds of the postseason. They get called on the personal Bazzi trying to go for the defensive SWAT. Instead getting the wrist. And that's only her first foul. Usually you would see her with three or four fouls at this time of the game. But again, you have no choice. She was just toe-to-toe -to -toe with Teresa Brown. Next one puts St. Clair in over the limit. As Brown makes the first of two. First player to 20 points on the night. It's been a heck of a performance from her, especially inside on offense. Been able to draw a lot of personals, 
has also been good on the glass. Oh my goodness, ever since the second half began, again, she's been taking care of business for the blue, for the double blue team. Brown got a piece of that one. The ball goes around. And a, and a personal, a blocking foul specifically called against the Bruins, number 10, McKenzie. McKenzie's second personal, 13 foul. Sheridan has a couple fouls to give. Janica Sarah gives it to an open Tompkins from deep. Again, no good. Tompkins has been ice cold all day from beyond the arc. Only she ended up with 10 points, though, however, so she keeps she has to go back inside. Mm -hmm. Ennis this time draws contact. And we'll have to see who this is on. This is going to be on Tompkins, they say. And a Barbara Sheard timeout coming up on the floor before the free throws on the Ennis drawn foul right I, there with the left hand. I, yeah, I have a feeling that's going to be on Tompkins. If it is, that's going to end her night. Indeed. Again, a Barbara Sheard timeout on the floor, 60-57 the score for St. Clair over the Sheridan Bruins. Remember, following this game at about 6 p.m. Eastern time, the men's teams will take the floor and that one's going to be an interesting one to watch. The last time these two teams met, it came down to a single possession victory for the Bruins in that one, Aaron. Absolutely, and you're looking and looking at that. That was the game where David Gomez Jr. got, got injured and he wasn't able to play the game against Humber. Now with the fully healthy David Gomez Jr., it might make a difference today, because keep in mind, they're trying to get into the top four of the West Division. Again, starts at 6 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to tune in on We Digital Productions. As you take a look at Andy Kiss, what do you think he is telling his team just a single possession lead in the closing stages of this one? I think it, the way I see it, you have to go back to the small ball lineup, go for the full court pressure. If they inbound the ball at half court, they have to find some way to limit their abilities to drive right down to the basket. At the line to shoot is Ennis with a chance to bring the lead down to one. Makes the first of two. And you know what? Free throws are keeping the Sheridan Bruins alive mm -hmm. in this one. Yeah, they have been very effective from the stripe. As a team, they were 70%. This time, no good. One for two at the strike, two point lead. Bruins in the bonus the rest of the fourth quarter. Three minutes to go. Logan Gassera to Tompkins. This time, elects to drive. Gives it to Jana, because Sarah can't handle the pass. And Jana had an open lane to drive. Mm -hmm, but she wasn't able to control the ball. This is now the opportunity for Sheridan to get back right into this game. Prior to this, the lead only changed about three times, but that was at the end of the first half. Tompkins trying to go in for the swan. Instead, taps it out of bounds off of Jarvis. Here's another thing to think about, though, for the defense. On the floor for St. Clair, three players with four personal fouls. Both the Casera twins and Tompkins. Okay, keep it simple, Taken back up by McKenzie. Tam forces the miss. Logan Casera back on the glass that time. Jana Casera with the basketball. Moved around the outside. Jana Casera to Tam. Back to Tompkins. Again. Give it to Janica Sarah. Drives in. Hard contact for two personal or two free throws coming up. And there were so many opportunities where St. Clair could have had an open shot. Look, Tompkins had a lot of real estate. Dished it over to Elichny and then two passes later, it was in mm -hmm. to Janica Sarah. So I, I find it a little bit disheartening why Elichny or Tompkins did take those two, uh, take those threes. But mm -hmm. then again, no. You talked about this in the fourth quarter, just ice cold from three-point land. That I understand. But when you have a lot of real estate, you have to take advantage of that. McKenzie with the second personal foul. And the fourth team foul for Sheridan. Both free throws are good. It's a four-point advantage. Press back out for St. Clair. Move back up to Charvis. Nearly stolen away. Charvis. Eustanis has a screen and gets the ball to drop. They applied the full court press, but the problem was Sheridan kept on moving the ball around near the baseline, and that's where you want to go to when it comes to the full court press. 
Tompkins, tap to Janica Serra. Move back out, Yowichny, the jumper, it's good! Anna Yowichny with the big time three with under two minutes to play. Ennis tries to respond back, trying to draw more contact misses. Move back up by St. Clair, looking for the chance for the potential dagger. Yowichny, wide open for three, off the side of the rim. Tap back out the Topkins. Move to Bozzi. Over to Yowichny. Back down low, Logan Casero. The fadeaway, no good. McDonald on the glass that time. Under 90 seconds to play in the four. McKenzie, the quick jumper, air balls. Ennis can't grab the rebound. St. Clair trying to move it back once again. Remember, next foul by Sheridan puts both teams in the bonus. Topkins with the big jumper. After all that time thinking whether to take the shot or not, she found her comfort zone right down at the elbow. Ennis trying to draw the contact. Goes off of St. Clair on the block. Bruins keep possession with 55.3 seconds remaining in the four. And this is a big possession, Aaron. Absolutely, St. Clair has to make sure they stay man to man. Ennis loses the ball, but they say it goes off of St. Clair. Still 15 on the shot clock. They'll re-inbound the basketball. Charvis stolen away by Yowichny. And here comes the personal. They'll, they'll go back. Lamp, they'll put Sheridan over the limit. Indeed, and they'll bring, bring in Dracas as soon as they can on the sideline after that. And that's the fifth on Charvis as well. She is done for the night. Five points to her credit. But that Tompkins mid-range jumper may turn out to be the dagger depending on how these final 50 seconds turn out. Yelechny with the first, and that three she had hit to stretch the lead to five was huge. Mm -hmm. Just great ball movement from St. Clair. Kirsten Tompkins going right back in her comfort zone with the mid-range jumper. Nine point game. Quickly moved up by the Bruins. Ennis can't handle the pass. Stolen away by Bozzi. And the intentional foul comes in. Two free throws coming up. That time on Dracas. Third personal for her. And St. Clair has a chance to move to double digits for the Saints. This would be if the score sticks a, their fourth victory in a row. And their eighth win at home, Aaron. They had to work for this one eight, so far. Eight and one record, one of the closest games we have seen so far in the sports like this year. It's a good start to end off the homestand of the year as a Barber's Chair timeout is forthcoming for the Bruins. Here's the thing though, the Bruins still have 50 seconds to try and come back in this one, Aaron. What do you do to try and close up the gap to have any sort of chance after this Barber's Chair timeout? Well, make sure the ball goes to the hands of either Teresa Brown or Marquia Ennis. You're looking at both of their stats right now. Teresa Brown with 21, Ennis with 12. Those are two of your bigs right mm -hmm. there. If you're able to use that to your advantage, along with the St. Clair's foul in trouble, yeah. you could be in the driver's seat to bring this back, bring this game back within single digits. And remember, the second half, the only reason why the Bruins have been close to this game so far is their ability to draw trips to the free throw line. Don't forget as well, the turnover game has been a factor all night. It's been more so a factor for the Bruins in this closing stretch, in my opinion, than for St. Clair's side. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Sheridan has found ways to close out quarters real yeah. strong, but it, the question is, is it too little, too late? Was that honor Lichty three the possible dagger? We're not sure about that yet, but the way I see it, St. Clair has their small ball lineup right now. Lots of future Saints dancing in the stands as they look to try and hold on with 40.3 seconds remaining to go in the fourth quarter. No timeouts remaining for the Bruins. Two Bombers chair timeouts for St. Clair. Tarakas moves it off to Brown. 
Brown puts up the quick three off the back of the rim. Bozzi on the rebound. And St. Clair looks to dribble it down. Brown tries to reach in. Grabs Selechny's arm to bring her to the stripe for Brown, just the second personal on the night. And Selechny again with a stellar performance, now with 16 points on the evening. Mind you, she had zero at halftime, Eric. That's how big she's been up. in the second half. Absolutely. 73-60, drive inside. Air ball goes out of bounds. Shot clock is off with 16.9 seconds remaining. For the Bruins, it was a hard fought game. But in the end, the St. Clair Saints will dribble it out. 73-60, the final, their fourth straight victory, and their 12th on the campaign. The Bruins drop to nine and seven on the season and lose their third straight in a row in this matchup. We'll take a step aside. When we come back, post-game coverage will get underway. You're watching We Did Your Productions live from the St. Croix College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario. Final score, 73-60. Hi, I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, We Digital. straight trucks. It doesn't matter if the freight is big or small. Mont's On Time Express can guarantee safe and prompt delivery service throughout Canada and the United States. Licensed to broker freight throughout North America, Mont's On Time Express features same-day delivery service along with a state-of-the-art dispatching system and live GPS tracking assistance. Mont's is fully insured and Canadian bonded and has certifications with FAST, CTAT, FIP, and SmartWay. Mont's On Time Express is open 24 hours a day, 364 days a year. To get your delivery moving, contact Mont's On Time Express at www.montsontime.ca or call toll free at 877-250-8282. Welcome back to the Sportsplex. The final score, the St. Clair Saints 73, the Sheridan Bruins 60. Joining me is the player of the game for the St. Clair Saints, Anu Olichny, 16 points. All of them coming from the second half. We'll get to that in a moment, but on a, in a game filled with turnovers and basically a defensive-minded 40 minutes, how were you guys able to pull off this victory? It was honestly just a good team win. I feel like we had to come together in the second half as the first half wasn't too good, but it's all about that mental toughness and coming back together to bring it all out. In the entire second half, you scored those 16 points. What did you change in your game today? I think I just kind of got out of my own head. I know I wasn't hitting some shots, but that can't define the rest of your game, right? So just don't think about it. Just keep on shooting, take the good shots, pass the open ones, and you know, just keep playing. The weekend isn't over for you guys. You got Humber tomorrow afternoon. They were able to pull off a victory against the Lambton Lions. What can you tell us about the Humber Hawks when it comes to tomorrow afternoon? They're a very good team, you know. We, it's going to be very competitive, but we can definitely play with them, and that doesn't change anything. We just come out strong, have a good game plan, and execute it well. Awesome job today. Thank you Thank for your you. time, Anna. Thanks. 16 points, all of them coming Thank from you. the second half. That's just unbelievable, and to be able to change your game plan in the first 20 minutes speaks a whole lot of volumes about this St. Clair team. Royal Church now joins me, and would you believe all those points from Ronald Lichney came from the second half. Um, out of all that, through the turnovers and everything, what did St. Clair do in the final 20 minutes to pull away with this victory? Well, um, poise, patience, and discipline. They, um, they outplayed a team in that last part of the fourth quarter that lives and dies on discipline and poise. So 
that's the kind of game you want to play late in the season, Aaron, because that's the kind of game that's going to come up in the playoffs, in the OCAA playoffs. And playing a game like that and winning a game like that means everything to this, to this team. It's going to really mature them. But you know what? They have another challenge. A.J. Sharma and company coming here tomorrow afternoon. That's the Humber Hawks. You've seen the Humber Hawks plenty of times. What can you tell us about what the Humber Hawks could bring to the table? Well, first of all, Aaron, I want to tell you that the key game was Sheridan today. That was the key game. Tomorrow's gravy. If you, if you beat the Hawks, that would be great. If you don't, it doesn't really matter in the standings because now you've separated yourself from Sheridan and you're going to get that, looks like you're going to get that third place finish, mm -hmm. which is a very good finish because you don't have to play number one in the OCAAs. But as far as uh, Humber is concerned, you have to hope they don't play very well and that you play really well. Absolutely. Seniors day tomorrow for the ladies team, but meanwhile, the St. Clair Saints will enjoy this victory over the Sheridan Bruins. Final score, 73 to 60. Game two of our doubleheader will be coming up in about 15 minutes or so. The Bruins and the Saints, a big one. We'll have the pregame show for that in just a moment. But for now, this is Aaron Sanders for We Digital Productions. We'll be back with you soon.